the three rules of securing a great condo investment in Toronto. How to secure a great Toronto condo investment in three easy steps. Hello friends, Yossi Kaplan here, Toronto Real Agent Mortgage Broker, Research Realty Search Mortgage. Today I'm going to show you the process I use in the thinking and all the exact steps I use to find a condo and invest in it. Okay, so what's the main problem today? The main problem today, of course, is the price is going up too high and too fast, okay? You go to condos.ca, if you logged in, they'll give you some graph here, 832 per square foot. In 2019, we still have glimpses of it started in six here and then in the sevens, and it gives you a 14.8% year-over-year change of value. Mind, mind you, their numbers come and go, but with 500 units sold, you know, that's pretty good track here. And you can see here, it's already reporting for January, 49 sales at 839 a foot, so it's even higher than this average because this average goes back. That means that the price is going up. Okay, and you can see 2019 we broke all the records and it's going up and up and up. Why is it going up? Because a lot of people are coming into Toronto. It's only one thing. There's more demand because more people are coming here. There's probably coming to Toronto 100,000 people every year. Probably coming about, you know, there's about 350,000 coming into Canada every year and that's legal. Okay, there's the people with jobs, they have money. So that's 350,000 uh, immigrants or so. They need at least quarter million, 300,000 homes every year. At least a third of those coming to Ontario, and most of it coming to GTA. There you go, okay? If, if, if you have a problem with this concept, you're on the wrong channel. So, I'm going to show you a few things. I'll get, get there in a second. Yesterday, I showed you 1181 Queen West. And the idea of this condo is that it's a phenomenal condo. It's an excellent residential neighborhood. It's a smaller building. It's got 112 units. And it's offering good values in about 1100 1200 a foot premium units for a little more and you're not competing with the downtown towers where if you're competing with the downtown towers there's more and more and more condos and you can't really beat it because there's always another guy next to you there's only another large condo and there's so many of them that in case that you know you need to get rid of your condo you always compete with everyone in your building and around you so that's that's becoming a problem you know there's so many condos sold downtown that now there's no more uniqueness. Your product is not unique anymore. You don't have anything special. You're basically competing with everything, everyone around you. So if you bought a floor plan, it's not the best, or building is not the greatest, you know, and you're not on the subway, you're not gonna be on the A-list, okay. So you have some options. That's what I showed you yesterday, 1181 Queen West. If you want more information about it in detail, uh, it's here, three hidden pre-construction condos. I gave all the detail. There's another one here, 57 Brock. Also, I think a phenomenal project. I, I gave it a good review in the same video yesterday, which is called uh, Three Hidden Pre-Construction Condos. And there's a third one, okay, which was West Condos. But you can look into these unique unique properties. This, you know, this is a small building, it's 97 units, 100 units. So that's great because it's mostly owner occupied. If a unit comes available in this building for sale or for rent, you can expect that the price will be better than if you're competing in a, in a tower or complex of a thousand units and there's another thousand or five thousand right around you and everyone's competing with everyone. So the price, the price is, there's a pressure down on the price. Another thing I saw this morning, just like to warm me up to what I'm going to tell you, the three rules. 211 Garden, there was a house that was listed, a uh, beautiful house, very good listing. And that thing sold very, very quickly. It hasn't reported sold, it, sold yet, but I know that they took an offer last night. Very, very nice, absolutely gorgeous. The listing was 1.435, 1,435,000 Canadian dollars. And we'll see how much they got. We'll probably know uh, later later today, okay? And that didn't last on the market for very long. Uh, there's another one here, 7 uh, unit 711-783 Bathurst. Also a gorgeous unit. I called the engine this morning, he goes, sold, and he just hung up on me. That was it, sold, and he hung up. Beautiful, beautiful unit. Uh, they probably sold over asking. We'll know the next day or two how much they actually got for it, but that's a phenomenal unit. Really gorgeous, one bedroom. Typical, classic one bedroom. I showed you in yesterday's video still units in the 500s, in the lower fives. If you can find anything in the five or 550, like a nice unit like this, to me, I think it's a great, it's a great find. It's a great buy. Okay, that's the 211 Garden I showed you. Okay, and this is a list of some pre-construction. I, I, um, did I filter here? No. Yeah, I filtered by high rise just to show you. And there's more, there's a lot, a lot more coming up. We're going to review one in a minute, but I want to get to the three rules. That's the purpose of this video. The three rules go like this, okay? What else I got for you? The common calculator. The three rules, it's very simple. Like everything in life, you need to know what are you going to do, 
how are you going to do it, and when and where you're going to do it. Okay, so what are you going to do? You're going to invest in a condo. So you're going to start looking at the market and doing a bit of research. And a lot of people call me and say, you know, just send me some floor plans. Well, that's great. And I will send them some floor plans. You know, now if they're not on the mailing list, I'm going to send them once, and then they're not going to get anything. If they're on the mailing list, they'll get it with everyone else because I just can't manually send floor plans to people. I, I get the list and I blast it to my, to my list. Um, buildings that are coming up, like if you like something more unique, like 123 Portland, amazing values, to my opinion. Boutique building, maybe the way to go in 2020. It's so gorgeous. It's just absolutely lovely in the location of Queen and Portland. What else can you ask for? The first thing is, what are you going to buy? Are you going to buy a large, um, in a large building, in a massive building? Or are you going to buy a boutique condo. Are you going to buy downtown core or are you going to buy a bit off the core in an area that can give you a little bit of everything and it's more residential so you have more chances of getting higher rent and more chances of, of selling for more? Or are you going to buy in a master plan community like Galleria? And I, re I reviewed a lot of these master plan communities uh, because it's got everything you need and it's a great place for families and it's going to get a rejuvenated park and all the city services you need. I really, really like the Galleria project and, and all the master plan communities. I think that's that's the way to go. Okay, I, I tend to go these days with the master plan communities or the boutique condos and one-off building. It's okay, but you're competing with every other one-off building. And here, especially from a young couple or family, I think it, it really appeals to me. Who is this person? <laughs> Uh, probably from the marketing. It it really appeals to me because there's something for everyone. If I have a young uh, young kids or baby or anything like that, it's it's very very good because you know I can just stay in the complex, go to the library, community center, go buy whatever I need. It's all there. It's fantastic. Okay, so the first step is what are you gonna do? Where are you gonna do it? How, okay, what are you gonna do? Where are you gonna buy? So get all your ducks in a row. And get all in ducks in a row means your area and your budget okay so a lot of people just i'm shopping around i don't know what's going on but at the time they shop around price keeps going up the price keeps going up on the resale okay on the resale this stuff it usually goes up by about one percent a month on average so if you look at a million dollar unit it's a ten thousand dollars per month every month you know divide by 30 300 400 dollars a month a condo may be come up at two uh, sorry uh, a day a condo can come up by 100 or 200 dollars a day okay so every day that you're blinking you you losing potential money and you're losing potential revenue and you're losing potential roi okay the second thing you need to know is how you're going to get it you really have to be prepared you have to be prepared so you're going to know what you're doing you got to have your real estate agent hopefully it's me yossi kaplan but if it's not me it's also good this information is for everyone, not just for my clients, for everyone that is interested in investing in Toronto real estate. So you have to have a great agent that gets it and knows what they're doing, okay? Now, there's 55,000 real estate agents in Toronto with all the respect. It's great. If you just started, that's amazing. I started two almost 20 years ago. But, you know, you, you're not going to spend $2.5 million with your cousin who just got their license who never ran a business. It just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. It makes a lot of sense to me. It makes a lot more sense to me that you go with someone who knows what they're doing. You know, if, if you need a good dentist, you're gonna go to the dentist. You need a good plumber, you're gonna go to the plumber. You need a problem solved, find the best. Oh, you can buy a boat, look at that. <laughs> Some of these pictures not showing up today. I think we got a bit of a slow internet. But let's buy this boat for 419. No, it's it's just a cross on the water, I guess. But you know what I'm saying? Like you need a professional, you need the right professional for you. It's very, very important. The second thing you need is of course you need to get your budget right. So as a mortgage broker, I can help you get your budget right. I can refer you to one of the mortgage brokers I work with. As long as you get your ducks in a row, get your get your plan in a row, you got you gotta go. Okay, you gotta go. So that's very good. So again, step number one is what are you gonna do and where are you gonna do it? And step number two is get your budget right and get your team right, okay? Lawyer is, is a little easier because most lawyers are providing, especially if it's a condo, it, it's pretty easy, it's similar. Um, but when it comes to real estate agents, you want to have the best you can for, for whatever you want to do. And you want to have your budget. So you got to get a good bro mortgage broker, at least get your budget right, okay? That's very, very good. That's very, very important for you to know. 
Okay, the third step, and maybe the most important step, is you have to take action. You have to take massive, massive action. And massive action means you gotta start putting your offers in. If you're looking into, if you're looking into residential that exists already, you know you may have to put a few offers in. I see that people average about three or four offers in before they actually kind of clue in on how to do it. Um, a lot of stuff sells literally when it's put on the market. So these two that I just showed you, like this one, they said offers on a, on a Tuesday night and they got it and they sold it. And the house I showed you, this house right here on Garden, okay? They, they said offers on a certain date. I think it was Monday or Tuesday night. They got the offers. They had a bunch of bidders and they closed it, okay? that So you have to be... Don't be afraid to go into multiple. If you're ready, you will get it. Because remember, a lot of pe other people go into multiples. They're just as scared and they're just not prepared and they don't have the right people working with them. So I can poke holes in, in their strategy. But if we come to the board with good strategy, if I come to the board and I have a good client and we have our budget and we have a mortgage letter ready and we have our finances ready and we have our ducks in a row and we know what we're doing, we've done the research and that's what we want, we're going to get it. Okay? Why? Because the person who's going to get the property is the person who done the work, who's the person who followed all the steps. First, first step, they got the property and they know what they need and they're prepared. Step number two, they got the team right. And step number three, they take massive action. They apply, they send the, they send the offers in, they send the bids in. This is some other homes I was looking at earlier. I look at homes too, by the way. Okay, there's a lot of great stuff out there. And there is a deal for you. There's always a deal for you, but you have to be ready for it because when it comes, other people are looking, other people already done the work, already got the team together, already got the mortgage letter together. So you just got to be just like them. That's very simple. If you're prepared, you can win. You don't need to be anything special. You know, it's not like a running competition where somebody has longer legs than you. No. <laughs> no one can beat you if you're prepared. You can win every single time if you're prepared. And if you didn't win every single time because you're prepared, then you'll learn for the next one until until you're ready. That's really gorgeous property. 849. Where is this? 44 Miller Street. Okay. A couple more things. Okay, so <clears throat> the price is going up like crazy, but it doesn't mean you can jump in and you can find that building that can give you that that value you want to look for value you want to look for a place where will really serve you for many years to come and the only way to invest today is many years to come okay so it's a long term we're always looking in the long term now your property may come up by 200,000 300,000 half a million within a few months or years it happens all the time and that's great and if you wanted to flip it true we can take a look at current value and how much would it cost to sell and flip nonetheless that's what you're going to do Okay, you gotta look for long-term value that will serve you well. It'll serve you and your family well. That's the most important thing. So when you look at these numbers, know what you're doing, get the right team, and put massive action. Number one, know what you're doing, your area, okay, your budget, the type of property you wanna buy, the type of floor plan you wanna buy, and then go for it. Now here's a good example. Uh, do I still have it open here? If I do, I do. Okay, this is number 55 Mercer floor plate. If, if you reach this part of the video, you're going to be really happy because what I'm telling you now is really, really important. Okay, this is the floor plate, the key plate for number 55. That's a typical plan I got from the developer. They're going to release this uh, in about a week or so. And the prices here are going to start in about 560s, 570s, and that's for the smallest unit. And you can see here the smallest unit is a hotel room size, 370 square feet. With the kitchen on the side, I told you guys, not good. If you put an L-shaped kitchen here, that gives more space here. That's a mistaken design, okay? Same here. This kitchen here could have been L-shaped kitchen here. The bed could go by the window and you, or by here, and you, you still have enough room, okay? That kitchen is a little better because it's at the back. Okay, nonetheless, what I'm going to tell you here is that the price for 55 is starting at around $1,400 a foot. Let's average $1,500 a foot over the lifespan of the sale, okay? So you may find the unit at $1,400 a foot, but remember, like, you're going to start at around $600,000. So something like 400 square feet at $600,000, that's about $1,500 a foot, $1,400 a foot, maybe if it's a larger unit. On the high floor, of course, it's going to be more. So some units in this building may be sold at sixteen. dollars or $1,700 a foot, okay? So is that a good investment? Well, the first thing you can do is you can go to the condocalculator.ca, put your name, your email, not a robot, download this thing, watch the video I got about it, 
and calculate your break-even cost. Nonetheless, it's even more important for you to understand that, yes, if you bought a unit of $1,500 foot and you got to put about 15% of that, let's say you're spending $700,000 on, on a unit, somewhere like, you know, four to 500,000, uh, uh, four to 500 square feet, so you're paying $700,000, your initial 15% is about 105,000, plus you have another 5%, that's another 35,000, <coughs> plus your closing costs, so you're looking at, you know, 150 to $180,000 to assume this unit and then of course your mortgage and, and your carrying costs okay that's all fine you know it's a fantastic building amazing developer very very experienced impeccable track record good investment in my opinion but because it's expensive per foot it's like a PE ratio is very high if you talk from the stock perspective that means you have to buy the best unit possible maybe get a bit of view in this case definitely a long term because it's gonna be hard to rid of these units later unless prices are really jumped up so much more by two or three hundred dollars a foot that that's enough margin for you to sell the unit pay for all the costs and still make and still make the markup and don't forget there's an hst issue in all these units okay so <coughs> the question is do you want to spend fourteen fifteen hundred dollars a foot in this building but you also have two other options option number one is to go downtown and basically buy Let's go to torontoconnorsforsale.com. And the, you have two options. One is to buy resale and the other to buy in another area. Okay. So if I'm going, uh, I'm just going to go Toronto. Just a general search here. Okay. Just to give me some ideas of what's going on. Price range. Actually, there's nothing under uh, 600. So there you go. And the property type is going to be a condo. So uh, okay. So now I'm starting to compare. I'm going, okay, if I'm going to have to pay, oops, I lost a zero there. If I'm going to have to pay, you know, 600000 that's good programming, my friends. Okay, I think that would work. Great. So here's a six hundred to eight hundred thousand dollar residential search, resale search, and you can start to see what you get here. Okay. So I'm zooming in. This is this is seven hundred square feet. So that's just about a thousand buck a foot. That's maybe a bit more than a thousand buck a foot. That's maybe slightly more than a thousand buck a foot. But I'm not at fourteen hundred. Okay. I'm less than fourteen hundred a foot. I'm way less than fourteen hundred a foot. Why? Because these are residential properties already exist. So the I'm going to compete that 55 Mercer, all these new buildings, I'm going, to com I'm going to compare, okay? So studio here on the second floor is asking for high price per foot. That's why it's on the market for so long. But as I keep looking, I will find something that makes sense for me. Here's 8 Mercer, okay? You keep looking, and then you start familiarizing yourself. These are assignments. And you keep familiarizing yourself with these units, and you can see you start to score units close to a $1,000 foot mark. So should you be paying 30 or 40 percent more for a new building with all the bands of whistle or just go for something that already exists? Maybe you can find a high floor, 36 floor, uh, and that's about that's about a thousand a foot. Can't tell you exactly, but that's about a thousand a foot. Okay, one plus one. Let's see what they got here. That's not a very good presentation. Still no pictures of the unit. That's what I call lazy agent. Okay, so they just stole the pictures from someone else, but they haven't actually put any pictures of the unit. Well, no wonder this unit is going to stay on the market for a little longer. It's two days. You should have your listings, your pictures of the unit listed as soon as you come. Nonetheless, let's say it's a good unit. Let's assume it's a reasonable unit. The price is reasonable. Okay, a thousand bucks a foot. That means to me, now, if I'm going to buy on Mercer Street, which is not too far away, do I want to pay another 30 or 40% for this, for this building? Well, maybe I do because I'm next to Nobu and I'm next to Bisha, and that's where things are going. I want to be in, in, the, in the best building possible, and I want the best construction technology and finishes, and I want to have rich neighbors and, own, and, and like that. So that's good logic. I would agree with it. But if you're looking for more of a cash situation, you, you, you want some return, you may want to look at something else, okay? You can find discounted units too, and this website, TorontoCondosForSale.com, will show you this unit has been discounted by forty thousand dollars. Okay, so maybe you can get it for seven hundred. Okay, now yes, it's 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 a low floor, but just for comparison, here's your building, and these are all low-level renders. I'm just gonna see if there's any floor plan here. 
Terrible, terrible listing, okay? No floor plans. But 670 square feet, so it's close to a uh, 10 foot ceiling, integrated flat. 10 foot ceiling because it's low floor, but it's not gonna have any view, okay? I don't know if it's facing north into Queen, or there's a building behind there, or south into Richmond. Uh, nonetheless, you know, it's a thousand buck a foot, so you can see how things start to even out here. So, of course, if you buy this one, you gotta assume it, you gotta pay for it right away. It's more expensive in the short term, and you can't really leverage the cost. But there's a lot of assignments still available. You know, when 355 uh, King is going to come up, and there's a lot, a lot of units here, okay? And, and it hasn't closed yet. It's going to close soon. And again, no floor plan, so lazy agent. Uh, but you may find a deal here. So do you want to find a deal here, or do you want to go for the new building? This is up to you. This is number one. Rule number one is where you're going, okay? And that's, that's your thing. There's no right and wrong, good or bad. It's more of your style of investment. And of course, rule number two, what's available to you. And rule number three, take action. Can you get to that unit on time? And there's nothing like rule number three, take massive action, massive positive action. If you can't do it, there's a floor plan. Okay, this is a lovely floor plan. Look, the kitchen is at the back. There's just one column here. There's a tiny little balcony. It's all glass. This is a really, really good design. It's fantastic. That's so the 50th floor. It's facing, I can't really tell. Where is the north arrow? Do you see it? I'm looking for that north arrow. I'm not sure. If that's north, it means it's east. Anyway, it's on the 50th floor. So that's very cool. Okay, and I got uh, how many square feet? They don't say exactly. I can find out if you're interested. Assignments on no showing. But you know, it's just over a thousand a foot. Now they probably paid six or seven hundred a foot. So there's probably some margin of, of negotiation here. Maybe you offer them 600. Maybe you offer them less. It's been on the market for quite a while, 150 days or so five months. M maybe a good time to negotiate a little bit. Maybe when the building closes, there'll be so many units, so many investors trying to offload that this person here will actually start to compete with someone else who's selling a few floors below or above for less okay so my friends the three rules where are you going what are you doing okay what what kind of building you want what kind of area you want what is your budget rule number two get your team together get your budget together get the mortgage broker and get your real estate agent yossi kaplan search realty will be very happy to help you right here and of course number three take massive action you gotta go for it you literally gotta go for it you gotta take action you gotta start submitting your offers because every time you wait it's going to be a problem. It, most people, they submit three or four offers before they get anything. So my recommendation for you, you start sending your offers in. You get a lot of, you get a lot of information. You get a lot of experience. You see how the process works and it's going to help you to focus down until you get what you want. That's it for today. Thank you very much.